yourself. Howdy, I'm uh, Lee Paxton, P-A-X-T-O-N, and uh, I used to play music with my sister Gina, and, and uh, so that's what I'm here to talk about today. We compared notes on the music that we liked. We wanted to do, we, we wanted to do our version of it, but in our way, with our words, our music but to sound like that rock and roll. And so, and rock and roll is just such a kinetic energy. It's such an intense feeling. It's just a, uh, it's, it's the hillbilly music of the hills, the Appalachian music mixed with the African-American music from the Delta, the blues, it, uh, merged. And it, I tell you, that beat, that, it just gets it, it just, that energy, and so, I thought, I got to do that, and I, I know she felt the same way, but she wanted to express how she felt, and I wanted to express how I felt, we didn't, so that we did butt heads, but I think, you know, as far as lyrics or sound, or how the music was, well, I mean, we'd hear us, what we liked in the music that we liked, or say, you know, what well, we'd like this guitar effect here, we want to play this guitar effect here, right? We like the way that's layered here. We like these chunky chords here. How do they do that, right? So we figure out how to do. How's Nirvana doing? Okay, they're hitting us a pedal to make that switch. So that distortion pedal, we get so, and because that's how it was. And then, then they got other pedals and other effects. And of course, you then you go back and you watch Hendrix. You watch those tapes. Like what are the loops? What are the thing? You want to learn all the, everything you can learn. Well, this is a good part here. Let's do. Yeah, I mean, just going over songs all the time. So, I mean, she played a lot of songs in the key of A, and I'd like, we would play a lot of songs in the key of E minor. And I think that's how we learned how to play guitar, was just strumming E minor to G, then E minor, G, C, and then just work that in. And then it, it, it's amazing how, it's, I think her songs are not complex, but they're good. And you don't, to play good heartfelt music, like the Appalachian Hillbilly music, you... Just, I, you learn it by doing it, you feel it. And it, it's just like that too. I don't think one needs to study in a fucking conservatory to play rock and roll, but you have to be driven to it every every day. First song that we composed ourselves. Okay. <laughs>
the B. She goes, why don't you want to comfort her? That part is a D. She goes down the D, the D chord. Why don't you want to comfort her? Then A. Why don't you come up? Back to D. Why don't you try to understand? Why don't you want to be my friend? Instruments for you to promote that at a young age, or? Well, we had a piano growing up, and so we played that. Mom had a guitar, so sometimes we'd strum on that. But yeah, I think that, well, that was. Struggle to regain my bind, for it seems that's all I've got. What is really tragic now, really, it is not. Seems so foolish to myself, shouldn't even try. And then I help write, well, this, this could sum it up. God, I want to be somewhere. Please, world, don't pass me by. And so we would collect, like, okay, this line's good, this line. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. But, uh... That's how it goes, and but it, I think all of it was worth it. I mean, there's because there's so much energy in that, in in her music and in the music that that we made, and the I struggle to regain my mind, but it seems it's all I've got. What is really tragic now? Seems so foolish to myself. Shouldn't even try. God, I wanna be somewhere. Please, world, don't pass me by.
empty eyes Then D Seems so important then Then C Something's always seems to come And it's forgotten once again E minor to A Then back to E minor I'm important for the moment But I D must begin to fade For I am only a speck of life Only you can make And then back Struggle to regain my mind For it seems it's all I've got That's just G That's E minor To G To E minor to A. So after that part builds from the first part, look around with empty eyes. Seems so important then. Something's always seems to come and it's forgotten once again. A. Then E minor. I'm important. For the moment, but I must begin to fade. For I, let's see, for I am only a speck of life. Only human made. And D. And then the E minor G, E minor A part. That really bursts when she hits the pedal. Struggle to regain. My mind, for it seems it's all I've got. What is really tragic now? Really, it is not. Seems so foolish to myself. Shouldn't even try. God, I wanna be somewhere. This world don't pass me. Then it be. How would you also describe Gina's musical style? Well, I think her style, I sum it up, and I don't think she'd like how I would describe this, but I, at least the stuff she made in the 90s, and even the stuff after, really, I would describe it as Appalachian grunge rock. But the, not just as the influence, you can hear a lot of influence of Nirvana and, and, all, and, and those, the grunge rock groups, but you also hear the uh, influence of Green Day and the post-punk, the pop punk, you hear the influence of the Cranberries and the Irish rock groups of the 90s and the 80s too, I mean, so, it, and the English, we listened to all that stuff, it wasn't just, there wasn't, I mean, that same year she saw Courtney Love, she saw Pink Floyd, when, well, David Gilmore, Roger Waters wasn't in the group then, but the other guys were, and she went and saw, and, in 94, Gina went and saw Courtney Love play uh, at uh, the Newport in Columbus, Ohio. And I think uh, I saw, we saw Fagazi there, I remember that. And, but, I mean, the groups at that time, I think when she saw Courtney Love, she thought, well, I can do that. You know, that's, I can play rock and roll. I'm, but I think in the 90s, uh, when the grunge rock came in, we, we mixed all the music that we'd heard and, and the Appalachian folk music and traditional bluegrass hillbilly music from these hills. And we wanted to put that into a type of rock and roll, like a grunge rock, uh, post-punk hybrid type of thing. Hard rock too, a little bit, but, um, but do like the, the Appalachian version of that. Um, <laughs> something like that now this song preppy I like this song I think it's a great class warfare song uh... I wait on when I listened to it I thought that she went I thought 
thought you were brave, eh? I thought so. But you're even scared of your shadow. Think that you're too good for me. But you ain't nothing. I thought we were trying to write good songs, which was what we were trying to do about like the music of that time, which was often kind of dour. And I, you know, I just thought we were trying to write good songs for that time. I didn't realize she often felt that way uh, her, herself. Um, like what, what their Nirvana songs like Lithium and the, the up and down emotional. She, uh, we didn't know she was bipolar then at all, but that obviously affected her, not just her life in other ways, but her music.
And so I think that, you know, I, I hear some of those songs a lot differently now. I mean, I just thought she was a, she's a very emotional person. She could be up and down. We didn't know she was bipolar to the last year of her life. We didn't know she was officially diagnosed as that. But, uh, you know, she could be up and down, but sometimes she could uh, be really on. And when she was, she was worth it. She could be so inspiring. And, and uh, that is what propelled it on, I think. I mean, not in that, in my obsession with trying to make, write and work out good music. There was this, that is a part of it too. And I don't, I don't think, I mean, there was some competitiveness, but I think it was mostly friendly. And, um, but look, we didn't always agree and so many, about so many things. And that was, there was always arguments, but it always usually produced something good. And that when you when you really, well, in any relationship is negotiations. When you really love somebody, you have to realize that you're not always going to agree. And so, but I think it was, it was worth it all. All, all of it.
that's what we wanted to do at that time in the 90s and we did because and, and that's what we focused on it was it was more important than probably anything for a while but we really connected over those those years from 93 94 95 96 and, and more sporadically and then after the year 2000 she moved down to texas and we live a north of the mason dixon line so we it's a different well, i didn't see her as much i didn't see her as much after that and it just but she would still send music i'd send her music of what i was doing we compare notes we always did we always talked about getting back together and, and playing music again even though we argued about every fucking thing it's just we we said we were going to do that and that was the that was the plan and and i always held out for that always thought we could work it out no matter what and we wanted to. I know she did. It just it just didn't happen. But I'm glad for what we were able to do, at least. And then the chorus, it, it goes F sharp. You got a lot of nerve. 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 You got a Start it from the beginning with A. I thought you were everything. F sharp. You got me by the ring. A. How'd I know if she came back? You see, F sharp. I act like you never knew me. Now you think everything's alright. I'm not leaving without a fight. Hey, hey them F sharp. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve. Hey, F sharp. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of Crush my hopes and dreams with all your skanky schemes. Had you in so much control, now it's gone and I'm the fool. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve. You got a lot. Start A over. Think it's easy to start over. Think it's easy to start over. You think it's easy to start over. I thought you were everything. You got me bothering. How'd I know if she? This is that part that's pretty cool. Then she hits that, she hits that switch, boom, and it goes F sharp.
How has Gina and her music affected your life, and how does it continue to affect your life? Oh, in so many ways. Um, well, we influenced each other beyond measure. We grew up together, and uh, we started writing songs and playing music, dissecting the music. It was important to me that she learned how to play all the parts of the songs on every instrument, um, and that I could too. And that well, we that the people we worked with were were took even if we were having fun, took it seriously enough, took us seriously as people, as friends. Uh, not just you know people trying to make art and music, but but people who are friends. And that was important as anything, as the music and. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think in so many ways, just because of the, just the, the interconnectedness of the music of the, that we grew up with and the writing songs together and the coming out of that, I, we, we would come up with songs and I remember it, some nights we would put our head against the screen window and we, the, the breeze would come in and we, we'd see the fireflies and we would just hum sounds. And we, there was this humidifier that we had. We'd sometimes put our heads against this thing and hear this thing hum like a drone. Like, mm -hmm. we, we listened to all sorts of things. And I think just hearing, the, being around the music, we come up with ideas for songs. I mean, when I, I, I think when I first realized the power of sound in the kitchen, what, uh, in McConnellsville, Ohio, we lived, and at that time, and I remember banging on pots and pans and in, in the kitchen, like a dr drums, and, but taking two of the tops of the pots and clanging them together, going bzz, bzz, and put it bzz, bzz, and hearing that, that drone and just coming up with ideas for beats and then hearing rock and roll for the first time, it just, I, I, hearing Buddy Holly and Richie Ballins and the Beatles and everybody else, it just, uh, we just grew up around it, and, and it was a way to entertain ourselves, growing up semi-rural, living southeastern Ohio, in Marietta, my, oh, my parents moved to Marietta in 1989, and we'd never had cable before out in the sticks of Morgan County, Ohio, but in Marietta we did, and then we could turn on the TV and see Slash playing the... And just seeing that, it just... I thought, damn, that uh, there was a lot of good rock and roll was. They, people played rock and roll then, and it was good, and so we we wanted to do that. And it just, it was years for it. I think to get good enough to play instruments, but we had ideas for songs, and we kick them around and and we we'd work and develop them. But I think when Nirvana came out, that was really, that was a big thing. It changed a lot of. Well, like, I mean, there was Guns N' Roses, then there was Nirvana, and then then there was this sort of, I mean, there was punk rock before, but it was, it was a raw, poppy punk rock, like the Pixies, but it, it, it became mass appeal, and I, well, we just liked that music, and, and I think it good rock, it was good rock and roll, and I, I always thought that we, uh, you know, could, could get into so many different types of music, too. But I, but always to come back with what our friends and I like to we all like to play Scott Fletcher and Eric Gray. Uh, we like to play rock and roll, and that's what we always wanted to do. So we were always thinking towards that, even if we were playing traditional music, acoustic music, we were mixing in elements of, of blues and everything else, eclecticism. But yeah, I I think. That's how there, there's her influence on my life was just just do it just try to make it happen. When I was first playing it, I was playing it in A, and it sounded like a country song. Put your face close to mine to think about you all the time, <laughs> and how it all will go. I wonder if it shows. Wonder if he knows She's the only one I really want to know and I... But yeah, it could be like a country song
Put your face close to mine. But then she plays it in a G, so it's more like Put your face close to mine. I think about you all the time. That's just G to C. Put your face close to mine. I think about you all the time. And how it all will go deep. Wonder if it shows. Thought I wanted to be alone And I, I never needed anyone So how come? How come she used how come? I don't like that way of speaking, but that's what she wrote How come? I want you by my side I think about the time Wonder if it shows But there's there's parts where there's different vocals Even though lo losing her from my life is a very tough thing, but I don't think of it like that song says. I don't think of it as a. Comp I don't think of her life as a tragedy, because she was such an intensely inspiring person, and it, it more than made up for everything else. She was worth it all. And I would have all those arguments again, and more. So it was. It was worth it all. And I don't see her life as a tragedy because I think her being in my life is more of a positive, always, than a negative. Just that, when I hear those songs, they're triumphant. And even if they're not always positive, life isn't always positive. But there's something real there. And that's what all good music, rock and roll, whatever, all good art comes from that. And it was worth it all. I just can't seem to wait when I coming home I just can't seem to live I just can't seem to wait when I I just don't want to be here anymore. I just can't seem to live I just can't seem to wait when
I just don't want to be here 